Hi, and welcome back to Top Solid 7. In this video, we're going to take a look at furthering the documentation of this project. But before we do that, I want to take a moment and step through everything that we've accomplished so far. First of all, we imported a PDF file from our customer. This was the part he wanted us to manufacture. We quickly turned that into a solid model in Top Solid. We then went through the process of designing the four position fixture. And again, just to remind people, if you want, if you middle click anywhere, there's a preview image in Top Solid. You go into a live preview, which is kind of cool. From there, we divided it up into sub assemblies, and then we sent some of those sub assemblies into machine part setup documents where we got to tell Top Solid, hey, this is the part to cut, this is the stock, and then these are any fixtures that we want to avoid. And then we added everything into a machining document and we programmed up the four positions to manufacture this part. And then we documented the manufacturing process with an automatic setup sheet, giving us tool information, speeds and feeds, pictures of every single setup uh, needed in order to make this part. That's kind of cool. But the work is far from over. Now what we want to do is we want to create exploded views of the assembly, right? Because we want to be able to document the assembly, how it goes together, so that the guys on the floor know how to work with it, as well as we still have to manufacture that fixture plate, right? So let's go ahead and get to work. I'm going to start by just right-clicking on the base plate subassembly here and going to explode it. And we're going to create exploded views for all five subassemblies first. And the way this works, it's quite simple. I add it to an exploded document. I'm going to come up here to translation. I'm going to set this to be my z-axis. And I'm going to say, in this case, I want to take those screws and explode them that way. Perfect. Now I want to take the bottom plate, explode it down six inches. Why not? Like that. And we're done. Now, before I continue, I'm going to right click on my four position fixture plate assembly here. I'm going to create a new subfolder in there and I'm going to call it exploded views. And again, I'm doing this just because I like to be super organized and I think it's a great way to work, especially if you work within a large team or even a small team. It's good to be organized. So let's keep going. I'm going to explode setup op one. Again, green check mark. We'll take a look at this in little 3D land there. And now when I go to do this, I'm going to use a reference part. Now, reference parts are kind of cool. What they allow you to do is use them as a way to tell Top Solid what's happening. And this is what I mean. I'm going to explode this screw up to this height relative to this reference part. Here's what I mean. If I go to here, make this the reference part, and now I explode that up, watch what happens. You see how the screw is automatically following the location of the washer and maintaining that offset. That's because we used it as a reference part. Perfect. Now I'm going to move that up some distance and like that, that explosion is done. And now we can always come back out here and tweak this to whatever we need it to be anyway. So now setup op one is done. Let's go do setup op two. We'll go ahead and explode that also. And I'm just going to bang through these nice and fast. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. We'll come up here, set our direction, We'll pick the two screws, we'll pull those up some distance, click OK, we'll save, let's move that into exploded views, let's do OP3 as well. Zoom out a little bit, we'll come over to here, set our direction, oops, pardon me, I don't want those as reference parts, perfect save, reorganize, and now let's go to setup op four, exploded. We'll bang out those screws as well. Z direction, screw one, screw two, perfect, and save. So now that we have all of these done, I'm gonna close all those documents because I don't need them open anymore. And now we're gonna make the main exploded view. And this is gonna be really, really cool. If I come in here and I go and make an exploded drawing of all of it, now you're going to understand why I chose to explode the subassemblies because I don't want to have to deal with this big of an assembly, even imagine if the assembly was even bigger, because it can get to be confusing. But most assemblies are built from subassemblies, and if you manage things properly in Top Solid, you can do something like this, which is including existing explosions, and in one click, get the perfect explosion every single time. That's awesome. Now, in my case, I want to do this a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of these, and I'm going to explode just op one to start with. 
then I'm going to do op 2, then I'm going to do op 3, and I'm hitting enter after each selection by the way, op 4, and finally the base plate. And now we're done. Now why did I do that? I did that because now I can go to my mounting animation and ask the software to build a mounting animation for us. And it's going to start by assembling that, then that, then this, and the next op, and then the final op. And if you wanted to play that backwards, that's how you disassemble it. It's really, really quite cool. It's a cool way to be able to show people on the floor how to assemble things. Now, from there, I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to ask the software to create my mounting stages. And I'm going to go ahead, green check mark, and that has created every mounting stage. I can even view my mounting stages. That's step one, two, three, four, five, and six. Cool. So now that that work's done, now we're going to do a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and build our bill of material off of the assembly. So I'm going to go to bill of material. I'm going to use just my standard little template, name, quantity, material, mass. Go ahead and hit my green check mark. Here's our bill of material. Notice we have the weights of everything listed on here. If I click on any of these items, it even shows up on the screen in there. I mean, how cool is that? I'm going to go ahead and save that. We don't need that open, so I'm going to close it, but we will use it in a minute. And now we're going to take this exploded drawing and we're going to make a drafting document for it. And we're going to choose a size, no standard view. And it does have a standard view, actually. It's just a standard front view. I'm going to go ahead and edit this view. I'm going to do a couple things. First, I want it to be shaded and I want hidden lines. Second, I want a little bit of an isometric view and I want this to be maybe two to one. I want it to be a little bit bigger so we can see things. I'm going to rotate this down a little bit because I want to be able to see all my components, which I can now see. Perfect. That looks good right there. And now I want to go ahead and take that bill of material and add that bill of material. I'm going to add it right there. Now, once I add it, though, you're going to notice it's running into my view, and that's kind of irritating. So what I'm going to do is ask the software to set a top limit right there. And you see how it just trimmed it up, put it underneath the view? Cool. Now we have our bill of material on there. We can pull that back up. I'm going to go to my detailing. I'm going to go to automatic indexes, select my view, hit go, and now everything is detailed beautifully. We have the balloons there, and maybe I'm trying to jam too much into one view. You can drag these things around. You can resize them to keep them in there. We could probably tell the software to make the balloons a little bit smaller too, but you get the idea. You can do whatever it is you need to do to get this documented quickly and efficiently. Let's pull that down to there. Notice how the balloon is trimming itself to the table even. That's kind of cool. Let's go over to here. Let's pull this up to over here. I like it. Try not to cross balloons. Perfect. Done. Now, from there what I want to do is I want to show step-by-step step the assembly process as well. So I'm going to come back up to view, and I'm going to project the same document, but a different way. I'm going to go here, make a new set. It'll be my mounting stages starting with step one. We'll green check mark this, and we'll throw it. Uh, let's throw it as a nice standard isometric. Why not? Maybe right there. And again, we'll go ahead and shade it. Hidden lines. Notice it says step one. Step two, step three, step four, five, and six. Remember those mounting stages we made earlier? Well, those allow you to come in and have the documented steps it takes to assemble everything. I mean, think about that. How much effort did that really take? And now we have a bill of material and we have our work done for us. I mean, that's pretty epic, right? So we're not done yet. I want to go here and I want to make yet some more drawings, okay? Now, first, I want to take and rename this drawing and add exploded views at the end of it. And I'm also going to move this down to my documentation side. And we're going to hit save. And now I'm going to open up that bill of material again. And now we're going to do something kind of cool, actually. I'm going to go here to multi-draft. And I'm going to make a bunch of drawings. Now, I'm going to start by deselecting all documents because what I want is only specific things. I want the base plate. I want the spacer, uh, spacer block. That's probably enough. Uh, nope, we don't need the brackets at all. We just want those two objects. And what I want to do is I want to change the view. And I'm going to say, how about a size with basic dims? Perfect. Let's do the same thing for spacer block, a size with basic dims. 
that's done, and I'm going to green check mark this. Now I could select everything at once if we want, but we don't need to do any of the other ones. I mean, maybe we should do the stocks as well. Why not? Let's do the, the, the stock models too. And let's just say apply this template to all documents, make it easier. And now we can go here to options and we can specify a source folder to be our documentation folder. Why not? Green check. And we'll even say open after creation. Normally I wouldn't, but because it's a demo, why not? And now what Top Solid's doing is all the heavy lifting for you. It's going to make all the drawings, you're going to see them pop up over here as it's doing it, based on what's in your actual bill of material. Now, I also have a setting in here that is having us uh, project based on the color of the part. You can change that if you want. But you can see I have some basic dimensions showing up on here also with some basic tolerances automatically. Is it perfect? No. Is it a good starting point? Yes. And away you go. And there's stock three and stock two and stock one, and here's your spacer block, and here's your base plate. I mean, check that out. That is pretty wild stuff. And of course, you could rescale this to fit the view, do whatever you need to do. Uh, we could try view layout, or we can go up here to scale, and we can say, let's try 0.15, make it a little bit bigger. You get the idea. But in a few short minutes, I have done all of the documentation needed for this job to be manufactured. Awesome. I'm going to hit save, and we're done.